Hello everyone. Good evening and good morning based on your time zone. Welcome to the first day of our MDG training. Before getting into our course, I will give you the course outline and I will explain you the learning path. Post that, we will be starting with our core content. So myself, Venkat, as you know, and I have around 14 plus years of ex uh, SAP experience. I started my initial career as an ABAPR, and before that, I worked as an assistant professor for uh, uh, MCA in one of the PG colleges in Andhra Pradesh. There, I worked for around two and a half years, and then due to some financial issues, and I had to jump to the uh, IT career. But teaching is my passion. And because of that only, I am uh, giving the trainings uh, especially. And I started my career as an ABAPR and then I worked on WebDM, ABAP, IFPM, a couple of objects and Adobe forms and CRM technical. And since last seven years, I've been working on MDG. And I work on various roles in MDG, like a technical consultant, technical architect, techno-functional consultant, team lead. Currently, I am working as an MDG solution architect for one of the MNCs here in India. And I got expo experience in various implementation projects and um, product implementation as well. That product implementation experience was with uh, uh, Utopia. I don't know how many of you are aware of that. And I got uh, experience in uh, support project and upgradation projects. Okay, successfully completed 10 batches. That's just a brief introduction about my profile. And uh, I'm a certified consultant, certified with the 1909 version. Now let's have a deep dive into our course curriculum. First, we will start with introduction to MDG. We'll see what is MDG and why MDG came into the picture and what are the advantages of using MDG by the industry and uh, what are the various data governance tools available in the market and what makes MDG to stand competitive among all the tools in the industry. And we will look into the architecture of MDG. What are the deployment options in MDG, like how we can deploy MDG into the client environment? What are the various storage areas? Meaning how we can store the master data in MDG environment. And what is the process flow? What are the various business processes like? What are the various master data operations we can do with MDG product? And what are the out of the box solutions? Meaning the standard solutions delivered by SAP with MDG product. All those things we are going to discuss in the first unit. The second unit about the baseline configuration. So this baseline configuration is nothing but setting up MDG system. Let's say you have purchased a new laptop. Before doing any tasks, what you need to do? First, you need to set up your laptop with all the configuration, settings, email ID, registration, and everything. Similarly, if clients would like to govern the master data using MDG solution, the respective SAP server has to be set up with MDG. How we can install and configure MDG in a fresh system. So it's not a single team. There are uh, few teams involved in this activity. But as an MDG consultant, we need to understand what is the role of each team, like basis team, IT team, security team, functional team, and finally MDG team. So all those things we will discuss here. Data modeling, nothing but modeling our master data. Like for example, I'll give you a simple example. Let's say there is a, a, an employee in an organization. What kinds of data that we can think of for an employee? Employee, personal details, employee address, employee communication, employee skills, employee experience, employee educational qualifications, 
an employee department where he is working, he or she is working, employee project details. So likewise, there are various data segments for an employee. Everything we cannot store into a single table, right? That would look clumsy. Let's say you have a laptop. Okay, in your laptop, you have a thousand files. You cannot store thousand files in a single folder. That's not a best, best practice. It would look clumsy. What you do? You organize into subfolders. Then in each folder, you store the relevant files. Simple. Similarly, employee information also, we cannot store the full details of an employee into single table. It looks clumsy. What we can do is we can create multiple tables, each table for each section of data, and we can link or establish the relationship between all these tables. That is how we can design the employee data in the system. In MDG also, if you want to design some master data or if you want to organize some data, you need to model that properly. Like for example, a material. A material can have various segments of data like material header data, material descriptions, material plant data, material purchasing data, material planning data, MRP data, classification data, characteristics, storage locations, etc, etc, etc. So all this data we cannot store into a single table. We need to divide that data into multiple tables. That's how our core ERP environment has been built. Similarly, in MDG also, if you want to govern the master data, be it a material or customer or supplier or equipment or functional location or can be an employee or any custom master data, you need to model that data properly first. You need to organize the master data. Then only users can perform their operations. So this entire data modeling chapter deals with that. How you can model your master data? What are the various ways? What is the effective way of modeling the data? What are the technical things involved in that? Everything we are going to discuss in this data modeling chapter. Service mapping tool. This is especially to map the data between two structures which are having a different formats. Okay, let me make it more simple. Let's say I have one source data, maybe employee data. In my source system, the employee table has employee field name as, employee ID name as EMP ID. And I want to send that data to maybe another system or maybe in another table or another location, be it anything. There, the employee field name as, employee ID field name is available as EMPNO. So here it is EMP ID, there it is EMPNO. But both are referring to the employee ID and both can store the same data, but the technical field names are different. Now, we need to map the data from one format to another format. It's just the fields, different sets of fields. Likewise, in that table, for example, let's assume there are 200 fields. 200 fields has the different names. So both are different, different environments. Okay, we cannot control that both should have same names, something like that. That's not in our control. So we have to map the data. If you have uh, around 200 fields for, for an example in the table. So when you are, when ABAPR is writing the program, what ABAPR can do is usually, okay, source fi uh, target field equal to source field, field one, field two, field two, like that. He or she can write the code. That is one way. There is nothing wrong. That works. So SAP introduced one tool called service mapping tool. And one more thing. This is not specific to MDG. This service mapping tool is there in non-MDG environment also, but MDG is leveraging this tool to map the data from MDG environment to non-MDG environment. 
okay why we need to map and what are the things involved those things we will discuss in our regular classes the main purpose of this tool is to map the data between two structures which are having a different field names that's it but the internal data type and type of the data that can store and the value that can store that remains same only the thing is the technical field names are different that's about this service mapping tool and uh, just one more thing so whatever the topics i am telling like data modeling or service mapping tool and down the line you will see ui modeling process modeling drf all those things so whatever the topic we are discussing i will go in a process like first i will give you theoretical introduction about that what is what because, because if you don't understand that then it doesn't make sense to show you the practical scenario directly first you need to understand what is what then i will walk you through the standard solution delivered by sap i will explain you how we can customize that using some real time scenario then i'll be giving you assignment so this is the process more or less we follow for every topic data quality and check one of the strongest capabilities of mdg is data quality improvement how we can improve the quality of the master data using mdg tool there are various ways like we can do the duplicate check like identifying the duplicate records and to identify the duplicate records we need to know the criteria like for an example if you are applying for uh, some job application sometimes when you are reapplying further the system gives you an error your applic your profile already exists in our database something like that how the system identifies system don't go through all your projects experiences all the companies that you worked your qualifications it won't go through all those things it just checks some parameters basic things like maybe your name it depends uh, from organization to organization i am just taking some generalized scenario it might uh, checks your name and uh, maybe mobile number and the email address or maybe uh, the date of birth or something other id or pan card number so it depends on the organization what criteria they they had uh, implemented so based on that criteria the duplicate profiles can be identified so that is nothing but the duplicate check so same here in mdg also let's say i have created one customer maybe i am running uh, one retail industry i got so many customers i am supplying to them whenever i am supplying of course i need to maintain their data in my database while i am maintaining the database maybe after couple of months or something same customer came again maybe i didn't remember or somehow i thought it might be the new customer then when i try to maintain the same customer again if still the system allows me to maintain the existing customer data one more time it's not correct because duplicate customer the system should prompt me hey this customer already exists then i need to make the transactions to the existing customer id only so the system should be capable enough to identify such kind of duplicate customers or suppliers or the business partners or the materials okay or if you are creating a gl account or cost center whatever it might be so that is one way how we can improve the data quality and another way implementing the business rules let's say you are filling one application form you want to enter the mobile number usually in india the mobile number consists of 10 digits no alphabets obviously if the system allows you to enter alphabets into the mobile number field is it the correct data no it's wrong data the system should prompt you or should stop you hey mobile number should be numerics and 10 digits only that is the validation if that validation is not in place you are finally 
getting into the incorrect data. The quality of the data is poor, obviously. We can build that kind of validations in MDG on the master data. Any master data, a standard solution or custom solution. Also, we can derive some data. For example, in the same application form, you have selected the country as India, your current country. Client has a requirement based on the country, automatically country code should be populated. Because the users may or may not know the country code and they should not enter the wrong country code. That is also one kind of way to improve the quality of the data. We are preventing the user to enter wrong data. So likewise, there are various ways that we can improve the quality of the master data. So all those things we will discuss in this unit. Unit 5, data quality and check. UI modeling. So in the back end, you put so much of efforts and whatever you build as many applications as you build. If there is no UI user interface, then all of that will be of no use. Let's say I want to present this document. If there is no PPT application or there is no any other application using which I can share my thoughts in the form of the presentation, how can I show you this? Now PPT application is helping me, PowerPoint application is helping me to present my thoughts to you. Similarly, you want to browse something. If there is no web browser application, how can you browse? There is no IE, there is no Chrome, there is no Firefox, there is no Safari. How can you browse whatever you wish? At least you need to have some application or browser. That is the power of UI. In MDG also, you have modeled your data, you have built all the business rules, you have implemented all the business logic required to govern that master data in the backend. But there is no UI. What is the use? How users can create a material? How users can change the business partner? How users can perform the operations on the jail account? Not possible, right? So UI is very important. Now, in order to build the UI in MDG, what are the underlying UI technologies? There are WebDime Pro ABAP and FPM Floor Plan Manager, which is an advanced technology for WebDime Pro ABAP. We can say likewise. Using this, the MDG UI applications can be built. And for this, you don't need to know anything about WebDime Pro ABAP or FPM. That's fine. I will take care of that. And you don't need to know complete WebDime Pro ABAP and complete FPM is also not required. Whatever the extent that is required to build UI, build UI applications in MDG, I'll be able to explain you those things in our regular classes. And theory, in theory, there are two kinds of applications. One is native theory application. Another one is FPM or WebTime Pro integrated theory applications. Maybe a slight confused. Let me give you one example. Let's say, uh, you have an Android mobile and your friend has uh, uh, maybe an iPhone. And now you like the iPhone, maybe the UI and the uh, user friendliness, whatever it might be. Somehow you are attracted towards an iPhone, but you can't afford that. Okay, as we know, iPhones are very expensive, but you have an interest to have that experience, at least the UI wise. Now what you can do is, Maybe if you are using some Samsung phone or any Android phone, you can install iOS theme. There are some third party apps. You can install the theme on your Android mobile. You can get the look and feel of an iPhone. But in the backend, let's say if you open an WhatsApp, in the backend, it is not an iOS version of the WhatsApp. It is still an Android version of the WhatsApp. But the front end, the look and feel is of iPhone only. Just the front end level. That's it. So meaning in the back end, it's still pointing in, pointing out to your core OS version application only. But in the front end, it is different. Whereas in an iPhone, if you are using the WhatsApp, it's a core iOS version WhatsApp application. 
So in your iPhone, if you are using the core iOS version application, that is called as native iOS application. And in your Android mobile, if you are using the iOS theme and apply that, that is nothing but the iOS, oh, sorry, Android integrated iOS application. Simple. So here also in MDG, all our UI applications built in FPM, floor plan manager. And FPM in turn integrated to web time program. You can't understand in detail also, that's fine. During UI modeling chapter, we'll go very deep way. But here I'm just giving you some outline. FPM is in turn integrated to web time program. All uh, uh, master data applications built in FPM only in MDG. Now, most of the customers are attracted towards the theory. So somehow SAP didn't release the native theory applications end to end for MDG. They released native theory applications for MDG, like material or whatever, but not to govern all the fields. Like material has around, let's say, let's just an example, maybe around 500 fields of data. So whatever the core attributes are required for material, maybe a 50 attributes, only with those 50 attributes, SAP had released one MD, theory application for MDG, MDG material. Those are called as lean applications, not full, lean. Those are the native theory applications. But customers don't accept that, right? If there are 500 fields, if you release an application with 50 fields, what is the use of that for me? Customers don't like that. Then SAP released FPM or WebDM Pro integrated theory applications. In the backend, those point to FPM only. But in the front end, they, front end, they get the look and feel of the theory. That's that simple. That's nothing but iOS theme applied to your Android application. So we will see both the cases and we will see how to customize all these things how to build a custom UI application end-to-end -end also, and what are the configuration required and what are the various options. Everything we are going to discuss in this UI modeling chapter. Process modeling. The entire process modeling revolves around workflows. The governance process, one of the core principles of MDG. And this is one of the biggest chapters in the entire course. This itself takes three weeks approximately. And this has that much importance also in the projects. You take any MDG project without this workflows, you can't think of any MDG project. There must be at least one workflow in every project. This has that much importance. I'll just give one example about what is this workflow or governance process. Let's say you are applying for uh, some home loan. So maybe you would like to purchase some 3 BHK flat. Uh, maybe the flat value is approximately 1 crore. And you can re you reach out to the bank and bank cannot directly uh, send you the funds, right? First you need to apply for the loan and they will validate financial credibility and your property, okay, whether it is a legal property or not. They validate all the documents. So once they validate everything, then they send it for the background check. They physically verify everything. Once that is done, then they send it for the further level approval. And based on all these checks, they calculate your eligibility. Maybe you had applied for one crore. No bank will give you as you as much as you applied. If your CV score is very high and if your credibility is very good, there is a chance that they might sanction you. Okay, let's assume that you applied for one crore, maybe based on your eligibility, they sanction 80 lakhs. And if you give the approval for them, or if you accept that, then they release the funds in phases wise, since it is a apartment. Okay, so this entire process is to streamline the loan process. Okay, it's not like as soon as you apply, simply they release the funds into your account, nothing like that. Same here also in MDG, let's say I'm an user, I would like to create a cost center for the quarter three and I go and create the cost center. So immediately if that cost center is available for the uh, 
uh, business to for the postings then what is the use of mdg where the governance is who is validating the data though we build the business rules and everything the manual validation is also important so here in mdg what we do is we build one governance process flow meaning if i am a user i am creating a call center i that call center won't get created directly in my system it will be sent to the approval next level maybe the manager for example so manager validates the call center data that i i had initiated he or she checks whether i had entered all the correct details or whether the call center is really needed for this quarter three or not then they might send to another uh, level for the approval based on the requirement so likewise we can configure in mdg for any master data be it a create process or change process or delete process or mass operation whatever it might be we need to have the proper approvals in place to have the master data into the system that is one of the ways how we can improve the quality of the master data so how we can build that approval process and how we can configure the approvers for each level in this process and how we can create the master data post approval all those things we are going to discuss in this process modeling chapter so here there are two types of workflows basically brf plus relevant workflows and non brf plus relevant even if you don't know brf plus that's fine so i am going to explain everything whatever relevant for mdg and there are various types of workflows like dynamic agent selection parallel workflows etc etc we will see all those scenarios next data replication framework so one more important uh, feature of mdg is the integration so mdg can be integrated with both sap and non sap environments of course there are certain limitations we will also discuss that but most of the environments can be integrated with mdg that means let's say you have an oracle environment and you have some uh, emdb system which can uh, uh, handle supplier data and let's say oracle has uh, uh, some material or finance data those are non sap systems now maybe client would like to govern those master data also since those master data is available in the non sap environment and mdg is an sap tool can we govern that data yes that can be possible in mdg we can integrate that data into mdg meaning we can load that data into mdg we can govern that once we govern the data what we need to do is we need to send that data back to those systems because those are the legacy systems where the business transactions are being performed so how we can integrate how we can load the data how we can replicate the data all those things we are going to discuss here there are various techniques to replicate all the configuration different ways to replicate what are the pros and cons what is recommended all those things we are going to discuss in this drf chapter next daf data import framework so this is mainly to load the external data into mdg like i said uh, we can load the data from external systems into mdg because mdg supports the integration if we have the source data in the file format you can load that into mdg so this is one of the tools to load the data there are other ways also to load the master data into mdg that this is one of the ways extending mdg standard features so as i said initially process that we follow for every topic is first we will see theoretical introduction then we understand the standard solution then we customize then we take the assignment etc so during this third stage customization so we will be extending the standard solution as per the client requirement like for example uh, take data model so let's say sap delivered the standard solution uh maybe the client has uh, one legacy system where uh, they have uh, maybe for example finance they have the finance jail account and 
they have some custom data, custom fields. Now, they, the client requirement is that custom fields should also be presented in MDG to govern. That means you need to enhance the standard solution to accommodate the custom fields. That is nothing but the extension. And once you enhance the standard data model with the custom fields, how user can enter the data, but that field should be available in the UI, right? So that means you need to enhance the UI. So here, all these are interrelated. It's just not like you can extend UI only or you can extend only data model or you can extend only SMT, not like that. There is a strong linkage. You need to do it in a flow. You cannot do it randomly. So how we can extend? What are the different ways to extend? All those things we'll be discussing in this extending MDG standard features chapter, or we can simply call it as extensibility in MDG. MDG analytics and monitoring. So most of the cases a business would like to get the analytical reports, maybe the monthly wise or quarterly wise or half yearly or sometimes weekly if it is a critical one. They would like to get the reports like uh, how many changes were initiated, how many were rejected, how many were approved, how many are in process, how many are breaching SLA, how many are waiting for the approval, how many are archived, Okay, like how many materials, business partners, customers, suppliers, all those things. For that, you don't need to build any custom thing. There are standard analytical reports delivered by SAP. We just need to understand what are the configuration required for that. That's it. We can work on the reports. We can get the reports as and when we need it. And next, MDG user experience with the Fire. As I said, initially during the UI modeling, so we do have two types of Fire applications. Native Fire, nothing but the lean applications we have here and WebDime Pro integrated. So mostly we work with WebDime Pro integrated Fire applications. There we can customize, like we can create the catalogs, groups, etc, etc. So you don't need to know any Fire thing. If you don't know, that's fine, no issues. I will give you the brief introduction and I will explain you how to create the Fiery custom catalogs groups, whichever applicable for MDG. But if you get a requirement in the real time to create a new Fiery applications, you don't need to bother about that. That will be taken care by the core Fiery team. You just need to give your uh, support from MDG perspective, that's it. So next unit, multi-object processing and mass changes. So here in MDG, we have uh, two kinds of uh, master data processing. One is a single object processing. Second one is multi object processing. It's just like creating a single material or creating multiple materials at a time or changing single material or creating multiple, ma uh, changing multiple materials. If you do the master data operation, object by object, that is single object processing. We call it as simply SOP. And if you want to perform multiple objects or process multiple objects, that is called as MOP, multi-object processing or mass processing. There are various ways to do the mass processing. Core MDG got my MOP one uh, option and mass change one option, file upload download one option. Earlier we had seen DAF, data import framework, that was one option. And in the latest MDG versions, SAP introduced a new, uh, an advanced module called MDC, Master Data Consolidation. Okay, that is again a separate uh, sub-module kind of thing. I will give you some worry about this MDC and I will show you one scenario about this also. And DQM, Data Quality Management, this is also one of the advanced sub-modules to MDG. So this also we will see uh, at high level what is DQM and how we can build the rules in DQM and the relevant configuration, whatever needed. Finally, the project activities. 
so though you learn everything properly and you practice well if you don't know how to work or how the project environment is going to be then you will be in trouble so you need to know what are the types of projects that we can see in mdg environment and what is the role of an mdg technical consultant or functional or techno functional or an architect so you can choose your uh, own role based on your uh, uh, preference and what kind of documentations that we need to work on in the real time and uh, how what is the build process there is a slight variation compared to traditional uh, like sap projects and mdg project and what are the end to end activities that are part of an mdg project so all those things we will discuss in this unit and this would be our last unit once we complete our course then i will walk you through the project relevant activities project documentation roles and responsibilities everything so all together the entire course has been divided into 16 units now one important thing is this units segregation is for our understanding only but when it comes to the reality during our entire course i don't go by this unit by unit wise maybe the initial 2 3 units i go in that order but post data modeling onwards i don't go in this sequence i go in a logical flow that means if i want to build one application what is the approach we follow in the real time first we create a data model in as in association to that we build one smt and then we build the ui then we build the business logic then we implement the workflow this is the flow we need to follow in the real time so i go in this flow i take a scenario how we can implement that in the real time i go in that way so in this entire process we might be going through different different units and later once i build this one the custom one i will again explain you how we can enhance the standard solution for that again i need to come back to the data model then smt might be required or might might not be required then i will go to the ui enhancement then workflow may or may not be required then i go to the business logic enhancement so likewise we go in a logical flow logical sequence but by the end of the course you will see all these 16 units are covered okay that is the process we follow in our course so that's about the course curriculum what are the topics that we are going to cover and i will try to explain each and every topic as much detailed as possible okay and mostly 75% of the cases we will uh, see the concepts using the real time scenarios why i excluded 20 to 25% is we are using the training servers so obviously the training servers has certain limitations i cannot be able to show you 100% in live like for example if i want to show you how mdg can be integrated with the three four systems it's not possible because i don't get three four systems i don't get that much strong basis consultants in this uh, uh, training environment but i will be explaining you or giving you the required inputs for that scenario so likewise there are couple of cases where i cannot be show able to show you practically but i can be able to give you the required inputs on that so that's why i said i want to be transparent so that's why i said 75% of the cases we go with the real time scenarios though i put so much of efforts i need uh, your cooperation also because end of the day you are the one who are going to get benefited out of this i am i i already have good experience in mdg and i am already doing the job so whether you learn or not it doesn't matter for me but you are learning the course and you are spending 3 and 1/2 months of valuable time out of your career you are spending amount then you need to justify that so do the hard work understand the concepts well practice well whenever you have doubts so i will be uh, sharing my contact number and email address you can reach out to me 
okay whenever you get doubt you can reach out to me i give i will give you the assignments work on that assignments try to complete it on time so that's about the course curriculum and my last question that uh, there will be communication like file uh, idocs and uh, server services right so there are four actually file huh. idoc server service rfc file and okay. rfc rfc we don't use it at all we use okay. idoc and server but we we will cover idoc and server in our classes okay oh fine yeah there will be any i mean configuration step please request uh, visit yes yes there are there are a lot of configuration uh, required for them we'll see everything end to end fine thank you yeah thank you thank you then bye bye